Okay, so in this video, um, we're going to look at adding functionality to Pong. And at this point, we just have the screen working. And you, um, you don't need to have the exact same thing, but something should look fairly similar. And what we'll do is we, we'll focus, I think on the last video, we already got this working, but we'll just focus on getting the paddles moving and I'll just kind of work through it again. I'm, I will focus on the right paddle. And you can see here in my draw loop, I've, you know, I've done really nothing more than just uh, draw the screen here. And my, you know, the only other thing I have is a new, new screen kind of initialized and set up, which is 800 by 600. So the real question is, how do we move this left player's paddle? And obviously, it's going to be the y variable. And so I'm going to create I'm, I'm going to create a variable. So now, for those students who are still new to programming, a variable is uh, essentially a name that stores a value somewhere in memory on the computer. In this case, the value is uh, the integer 300. So it's important to remember what kind of value, not just what the value is. This is a, a number of 300, but that it's an integer. This is also important to pay attention to that, and then that's called the type. So the variable name is left y. The value is 300, and the type is is a, a, an integer, and if we run this again, we won't see any change. We'll just see the the uh, sorry left the left player will see the paddle still appear at 300. If I change it to 100, it's going to move up, you know, 200 pixels to somewhere up there. We'll just run it again. You can see it's moved. So, you know, a lot of things in programs are managed through variables. This is such a key and important way of working with information. The difference between using the 300 typed in here and using a variable is that we can change this variable and we'll see in a moment in many different places in our program and you know this screen will update and move it. So in our game we're probably going to change it by changing by pressing a key on the keyboard. And if we were to go to the uh, processing website, we would see the reference manual, and there would be a key pressed function that would tell us how to move things using the keyboard. So you should look at that. You should always be now. Just notice that there's two versions of this. There's the one with no brackets and the one with the brackets. We are interested in the one with the brackets right now. You can, yeah, so so there it is. And, um, you know, one thing you can do in processing, and I encourage you to try this, is, you know, just copy and paste those examples and run them and see what's going to happen. Or you can even think about what's going to happen before you run it. Um, there's something similar to what we had set up. There's just a simple variable at the top and it does the value for the fill. So a zero value should give you a black and it draws that rectangle which was going to be black. So it has a black rectangle. But you can see down here, we'll talk about this in, no, let's, let's talk about this example and then we'll apply it to our own. You can see down here that uh, it's changing the value. Now, Without going too much into the why of this, the value needs to be changed by uh, the the value here that that gets changed inside of this function key pressed. I'm just going to fix the indenting there because that value, that variable value, this variable was created up here. This is called a global variable. It's made outside of any of these functions. 
And because it's global, we have to tell this function keypass, we have to tell it, let's use the global value. It's kind of expecting to have a value inside of this function. It's one of the benefits of functions, is you get a way to have your own variables inside of a function, keeps things nice and separate, and prevents all sorts of other problems. But here we're going to go around, we're going to work around that. <clears throat> we're not going to use that local idea, we're going to use the variable up here. This can be a bad idea, but this is how it's going to work. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, if the value is currently zero, this if statement here says if the value is zero, which it is on when it first runs, well, then assign it. This is assignment, just like we did up here, right? You gave it the value zero. Well, now we're giving it the value 255. Okay, so just ignoring this bottom part, this just simply says if the value is zero, change it to 255. And this else statement says, well, you know what, if this is not true, so if the value was not zero, maybe it was 255, the value wasn't zero, then let's change it to zero. Only one of these will ever run, only one of line 15 or 17. You check this, this is called a uh, condition. If it's true, you, you assume this code runs. If it's not true, and there's an else, one else, like there is here, then this one runs. Let's see it. So that would make it click, when I click it, the key press, it should turn white, because 255 is white. Very slow. All right, so I've clicked in the sketch just to make sure it has focus, and then I hit the space bar, it turns white, hit the space bar again, now when I hit the space bar again, the value was 255. This was false. It ran the else statement and it made it the value zero. Now this is global, so inside draw, that's the same variable here, and it uh, filled it black again. So that's just a way to kind of get up and running with some of these new concepts using the, the manual. You know, look at the code, maybe think about how does it work? Uh, what's it going to do before I run it? And then maybe you're in a good position to do some modifying. We're in the same situation. We want to modify a variable called left y. Don't think we want to do exactly what this is doing, but we do want to modify it. So let's just let's just modify. It doesn't matter which key is pressed. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just modify it by adding, you know, one to it. Okay, so I think I did this last time, but I'm kind of going a little more slowly for, especially for the students who have just started programming and we're just kind of jumping in at this point. So here I'm hitting the space bar and it's so slowly moving down and it's leaving this black trail. That black trail is the stroke. Okay, so this upper top edge is black and as I move it down, I haven't put a background in yet, so as I move it down, the old, anything old that was already drawn remains, it, it draws this line. Okay, so we're seeing paddle on top of paddle on top of paddle. So I'll just start by giving, a, it's basically like a new screen, you can think of this as a new screen. I'm basically filling the whole screen with this gray is a you know a one one RGB value is gray and it's the gray value that processing starts off with. So now when I go down there's no smearing. You can see that. Let's speed it up. Let's move it down. How could we speed it up? Well we move down by one pixel. You know what if we move down by a few pixels at a time? This is three pixels. This would be three times faster. And you can see that's you know maybe that's the right speed, maybe it's not. I, it doesn't matter right now to me if it is I'm going to figure that out later, um, make it a tiny bit faster, and but it's only going down. And you know, the say, say player to the or the left player should say, say they're supposed to use the W key and the S key to go up and down. So S should be down, and um, that's going to be down. How do we how do we find how do we work the key? So if you if you look in here, you will see some information about using this thing called key. 
and there's also a, man, a documentation page for that. And so long as is so long as it isn't a backspace tab enter return these special keys, you can check this variable key and see what it is to find out if you know to find out what to do. So in this case, I'm saying if it's the S key, then I'm going to go down. So again, another if statement. And in this case, I didn't create this variable. Processing created this variable for me. You know, there's, there's definitely some code processing's got to kind of manage all the things going on. Finding out if a key is pressed, they're finding out if the mouse is moving, um, running the draw loop for us. All, all of those things is being taken care of by processing. So the variable key was created by processing. It has the value of the last key that was pressed. This value is not like the last value, it's not a number. This value has quotes around it. We call this a string. This is just a short piece of text, in this case a single character. And, uh, well, it could be quite a long piece of text if we wanted, but this is just the letter S. But this is going to be really useful because now, instead of I'm pressing the space bar, nothing's happening, but when I press the S key, it goes down. If I have the cap locks down, that would be capital S. That would not be the same thing. This would not be true. And because uh, this, you know, oftentimes computer code is uh, case sensitive. So you might have noticed in the example on the processing site, they did something like this. So this is also, you know, just a big condition inside of this if statement. And this basically says, hey, check to see if this one is true. If it's not, check to see if this one's true. If either one is true, then we'll do this. So this is a, a boolean or. This isn't the most important thing, but I guess it's kind of nice. We could leave it in there. We could not leave it in there. I'm just going to keep it simple. And let's check for the other key, which will be up, and that will be W. So W is up. And up is negative 5 on the y-axis. Okay, so w is, w is not working. Key is W. Got to change that to a W. If that's going to be actually W. There's W is working and S is working. So it can go up and down. Now I know this is kind of not working. You know what would be nice if we just pressed it and it kept going? It kind of is. Um, so that's going to be good enough, I think, for now. We're going to change this later to work a little more smoothly, especially when we have two players. But I think the important thing is to take this in steps and recognize that, especially when you're starting out, that you don't have to get it perfect and you just keep learning and trying things out and best case understanding your own code as you write your own code line by line not grabbing anyone else's code but just kind of slowly building it up okay so there's more things i'd like to do here but I, i'm going to stop there and encourage you to get both paddles working and next video we'll, we'll return to looking at the ball and getting that bouncing so see if you can get those paddles finished and uh, and when that's done then we'll look at making this ball move. Try to be consistent about variables. So in this case, if you're going to use left underscore y as a, a variable name, then this other one, right underscore y, would make the most sense, I think. And then maybe the ball, I'll, I'll stick with that, and ball underscore x, ball underscore y. But, you know, that's a personal choice, but you have to kind of pick some, it's best to be consistent. And please, these are comments. Please include comments. We really have, we're really jumping in and just kind of writing code. We haven't done really nearly enough planning, but uh, we can at least, you know, write comments to explain our code as we're going, and this is really important. So um, you don't have to do every single line. You know, this is in the manual. You can look this up. You don't have to explain what size does, but like what, you know, what is this variable for? Um, that's the vertical position of the left player. Okay, label that. 
and label why you're changing it and why are you checking for this S key? You know, what's that supposed to do? Oh, it's going to move it here. Explain it. Okay, I'll stop there.